All right, people. I keep getting emails from people telling me to dismantle some of the arguments of this Thomas Sowell guy, and apparently he's one of the foundational thinkers of the right and blah, blah, blah. Um, okay, let's do it. Every time I see shit from this guy, he comes off stupid as fuck. So, you know, oh wait, sorry, we're gonna be amicable, okay? Hello, fellow cons- my- my fellow conservatives. I am just a- a- um, a disillusioned liberal, and I just had some questions about the- the works of the man Thomas Sowell. Okay? Here- so let- let me- let me think about this. Hello, make sure to subscribe. I think we're talking across purposes. On the one hand, we're talking about results- So, this is Thomas Sowell dismantles egalitarianism. Okay, let's do it that we're hoping for. On the other hand, we're talking about processes that we're setting in motion. Uh, you're saying, should we hope for certain kinds of lessening of inequality and so on? Uh, the real question, the political question is, shall we set in motion certain processes because we hope for that? And do those processes enhance or reduce freedom? And I think the argument that Milton is making, certainly the argument that I would make, is that the attempt at doing these things, and it doesn't really matter, it's a complete straw man to talk about absolute inequality. But if you are, if, no, no, yeah, not yes, at all. Yes, it is, no. absolutely. Throughout the film, this is the straw man he brings up in order to say how ridiculous to have absolute equality. And then he goes on no, to say how ridiculous to have absolute equality. My whole point is, it's as, well. a, as a result, you see, that you set up processes whose who, who, end result may not be any more or less inequality than exists now, but the question is, those processes may indeed reduce freedom greatly. Uh, I would go Okay, so there are two types of equality. Equality of outcome and equality of, um, of uh, I guess, of process. Equality from a, from a sort of foundational position. So this is the, uh, some people call it equity versus equality. Oh, equality of opportunity. Thank you, yeah. Though, honestly, I would argue even equality of opportunity is kind of a misnomer um, because nobody has the same opportunities in life. It's more, do, have we done everything we can to ensure that everyone's getting a fair shake, a fair chance at uh, um, an equal outcome? Not that everyone has an equal outcome, that's not possible, but everyone has access to the same basic freedoms and processes. Um, now, here's the same conservative grift that gets played every single fucking time I hear one of these idiots open their stupid fucking mouths, okay? The left claims to want equality. What do they mean by that? Do they mean equality of outcome, where we're all exactly the same? Well, that's impossible. Equality is impossible. This is the, I hear it every single fucking time. It's insane how often they do this. It's, uh, well, of co of, uh, well, that can happen, actually, obviously. Nobody, let me be perfectly clear about this, nobody talks about equality of outcome. Nobody does. Absolutely nobody. Nobody. Zero people do. Okay? When we're talking about equality of outcome, the concept of equality of outcome is this nebulous, dystopic, uh, uh, like, concept that nobody seriously advocates for in politics. Nobody does. When people talk about equality, people are talking, talking about equality of opportunity, equality of access, equality of process. That's what people are talking about. Very simply, if you are born in this world, it is best that everyone have basically the same shot at being able to succeed. Does that mean everyone will succeed? No, of course not, obviously. Even in some perfect communist world or whatever, um, like where everyone's super perfectly equal or whatever, there will still be differences in people's performance, there will still be differences in people's outcomes. And I think that's a beautiful thing, by the way. I don't want to be exactly like anyone else. Nobody does. Everybody likes the variety in humanity that they see as a product of inequality of, 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 of outcome. Everybody likes that. Nobody wants to be exactly the same height, strength, but the thing is, the um, equality of outcome is such a stupidly impossible, undesirable concept, nobody's out going out to bat for it. So when people like Thomas over here are like, uh, well, you have this thing called, um, mm, you have it called uh, mm, uh, equality of outcome. Nobody's talking about this. And when people who pretend to be intellectuals waste any of their time on this idea, what they're trying to do is give you the false impression that there's some other political entity, the left, that does care about this and their dystopic vision will reign and destroy all of America as we know it. No, nobody talks about this go beyond the question of equality and, and put it more generally, that any process to ascribe any status to any group of people, equality, inferiority, superiority, must necessarily reduce freedom because whatever the government wishes to ascribe to any group, whatever, whatever place, to use the phrase that was very common in the South, that blacks should have their place, whatever place 
the government is going to assign to people, that place will not coincide, wait, that, that place will not coincide either with, with what all those people are doing or with how others perceive all those people because there's too much diversity among human beings. To I, this point is actually so stupid, it's actually unfathomable to me that he would attempt to make this. So what he's essentially arguing right now is that any time any sort of differentiated status is given to a certain group of people, it's dumb because there's diversity amongst people. This is an idiotic perspective. I have no idea what these two things have to do with one another. So, because Sowell is a conservative and thus must necessarily simp for corporations at every conceivable opportunity, what he's arguing for here is any sort of privileged position established by the government, in any sense, is actually an attempt to enforce equality of outcome and that it's inequitable and it reduces human freedoms because there are so many differences between individuals that to try to enforce a categorization of like, uh, like that upon them is to, I don't know, bring about bad outcomes. Here's the problem. First of all, the government is not the only institutions that put people into categories. Advertisers do that. Corporations do that. Insurance agencies do that. And also, the circumstances of your birth do that. The idea that people are on a completely level playing field from ground set and then the government is the one that fucks with the scales is a complete libertarian lie. It's not true. People are not born in equal positions. People are born to poor and wealthy families, to good and bad school districts, in neighborhoods which may or may not have good job opportunities, to parents who may or may not, by the way, be good parents. There are forms of inequality that aren't even uh, products of racism or sexism or of economic differentiation. Sometimes it can be as simple as, my parents were good to me and yours were not. Sometimes it's that simple. There is no level playing field. The idea of there being some sort of natural state of man where everyone exists on a flat plane and then it's the government that fucks with that is a complete fucking, it's just a complete lie. It's not true. It's never been true. And corp even if that was true, corporations also do that. When so does cultural, uh, uh, so do cor cultural forces. When a cultural institution like racism disprivileges black people and privileges white people, that is an imposition now that has lessened human freedom. If the government has the opportunity to bring those back into line, human freedom goes back to being enhanced. There's this implication here that any bias or restriction which is imposed by a non-government entity actually enriches human freedom and any which is imposed by the government reduces human freedom. Now, don't get me wrong, the government can reduce human freedom just fine. Obviously. I'm a libertarian. Um, but there are ways in which the government can impose power to actually enhance freedom. Like, for example, welfare. Countries with higher welfare have higher wealth mobility. Did you guys know that? America's shit. You go over to the Scandinavian countries, these countries have way better wealth mobility and better welfare. Wealth mobility is almost a direct indicator of economic freedom. And it's not perfect over there, but it's better than it is over here. Do you know why? Because if you're born poor in America, you're likely to stay poor. Welfare is a mechanism that enhances human freedom because it means the circumstances of one's birth are less capable of preventing them from living an enriching, fulfilling life with equal opportunity to others. That's a government imposition. Now, that doesn't mean all welfare is good. It still has to be done well, and it will never be done perfectly. The argument will always continue. But the idea that, like, any kind of government imposition is inherently bad is fucking ridiculous. And by the way, this info like this is explicitly designed to serve the political interests of corporations. There's a reason why they go for this sort of thing. To maintain any system of ascribed status from the top is going to mean reducing people's freedom across the spectrum. That's right. the point. People have an ascribed As I just said, this is obviously a ridiculous point. ...scribed status. It isn't as if government, by its intervention, creates it. People are born into this world True. in a given sector of a society, and many, many of them are born at the bottom of the society. The argument for, uh, about equality of results was an argument that was linked to equality of opportunity. People recognized that unless there was a degree of equality in a, a degree of the, enough food, enough security, uh, access to education, unless these things were available to all children, then equality of opportunity was merely a mockery. That's why equality of results became an issue, and it became an issue for black people in the United States, and they expressed their concern, no, whatever the opinion You expressed polls. it, damn it, look. Damn, wait, why am I even here if she's just fucking owning him? But this video is titled, Thomas Sowell dismantles egalitarianism. So I guess the people who watch this 
are just kind of dumb. I don't know. Just FYI, this guy studied at the Chicago school under Friedman, the same school and people that supported Pinochet in Chile. Uh, Chile, that's the world he wants, Google Chicago boys. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Just to be clear, when people of these political ambitions actually get hold of governments, fascism is what results. Just to be perfectly clear. It's, it's not some sort of beautiful egalitarian society where all live in freedom. It's the, it's the crushing of democratically elected socialists and the elevation of fascists who slaughter people for their political opinions. Thomas Sowell's pr um, priority here is not freedom of humans, it is freedom of capital. <laughs> the, 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 no, they did not. They did right. not. And whatever they did, the opinion you expressed polls, it. Damn it! Look, the, 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 no, they did not. They did they, not. They damn express it. That. That. Wait, that's what they clap for? He says no. You expressed it. Damn it! And they clap for that. Who's the audience here? They expressed their will by their extraordinary participation in a protest movement that began in the late 1950s and didn't end until I the I have 1960s. never. Intellectuals were not in that protest movement. You want me to Black answer or you want to keep going? You want me to answer? Dude, what the fuck is wrong with him? He talked for way longer than her and he's like mad that she's, Jesus Christ, salty. I finished. Yes. Good. Black people have never supported, for example, affirmative action, POTUS, anything of that sort. Wherever polls have been... Uh, I'm going to need a citation on that. Also, wait, wait, hold on, hold on, hold on. Even if that was true, even if that was true, nice hit poll. That's not an argument. Taking a black opinion on such matters of should people be paid equally or should there be this or that, black people have never taken a position that you describe. Wait, black people have never taken the position that they should be paid equally to white people? What the fuck are you talking about? Yeah, what? Yeah, what is this Uncle Ruckus shit? Like, hey, I'm a black guy. I've met a lot of black people. We don't actually care about being paid the same. What the fuck is going on right now? I, I, I mean, I don't have, like, pulling data on hand. First of all, I don't need to support the popularity of these arguments to actually defend them. Even if nobody on Earth defended these arguments, they would still be perfectly valid if, they could be, if their premises could be defended. Um, but, um, but even with that being said, you're telling me bla black people literally fought in the civil rights movement to not be able to be discriminated against in the employment, uh, with employment. That was literally what they fought against in large part which includes pay disparity. So it is not a question of what black people chose to do. It's what you, you choose to put in the mouths of black people. It is what you choose to, to project. Dude, this is Candace Owens, but 40 years ago. This is the exact same set of arguments. He, so first of all, he lies and makes up a position of black people. And then he says the person trying to help people, black people is the real racist because they're pushing the narrative that black people don't want to be second-class citizens into the mouths of black people. This is, this is the exact same set of arguments. No wonder the conservatives like this guy so much. It's perfect. He we he's anti-idpol, but he'll weaponize idpol when it's convenient to him. He talks about the necessity for human freedom, but then he'll use arguments of populism to argue against claims for human freedom. He'll lie about the uh, needs and interests of black people and then claim others are racist when they tell him that that's actually not the case. What a fucking clown, dude. Holy shit. It is not what any black people have ever said anywhere that you can put your it's finger on. No black person has ever said they want equal pay for equal work. Damn, that's... I would love to see a source on that, my dude. I think they had a whole fucking movement about that in large part. He's claiming to speak for all black people. It's extraordinary. Put into the mouth of the pollsters, as far as I can see. I put the mouth leadership of the, of the black community. Like most people, I have never seen a pollster. If you look at the leadership of the black community. Wait, he claims that the polls support him, and then he jokes about having never actually seen the polls? And they're clapping? That's fu- he uh, yeah, if you look at the polls, they'll actually say black people don't care about getting paid equal work. You're forcing that on them, you fucking racist. Oh, I mean, I don't actually look at the polls, just like, oh, base so well, base so well, big brain. But I want to go back yeah. to the, I want to carry it back to the, the earlier point. Number one, there's no question about what equality of results 
if it comes about through a framework of freedom, is a desirable result. Nobody talks about equality of results. Nobody talks about this. I don't know why we're continuing to talk about this. Number two. I oh, yeah. Hello, Milton Freeman. Sorry, I wasn't actually looking. Okay, now I know why the audience is clapping for Sewell. This, we have fucking Friedman in the audience. Argue in the film? I, I've argued here. Sorry, one last pause. I want you to understand conservatism has always had one of these. It's vital to undermining the call for equality of minorities. Um, because it's racist if white conservatives say it, but if a black face says it and they simply affirm him, it's what the community wants. Yeah, of course, obviously. Um, that's why the, the whole um, uh, turncoat token shit is so important for conservatism. If a white guy went up there and said, black people don't want this, they would obviously and rightfully be called racist for it. But you find one black guy in a million who will say shit like, black people don't care about being paid equally, and then all of a sudden, you can get the entire party behind them. That in point of fact, you get greater equality of actual results by a system under which people are free to achieve unequal results. That for the poor people of the world... Nobody is talking about building a system where people aren't free to achieve unequal results. He just said something tautological. Did you hear that? People are more free if they're free to have different results. This is one of the world's leading minds of, uh, of laissez-faire capitalism, by the way. The world that uh, Francis Fox Piven was talking about, the most effective mechanism for enabling them to improve their status is not a governmental program which seeks to ascribe to them certain positions, which seeks to provide them with certain goods and services, but a governmental program which tries to eliminate arbitrary barriers to advancement. I would say that in this world... So he's saying that rather than giving poor people food and money, instead we have less business regulations. Um, now, this is funny for a number of reasons. First of all, uh, we have countries now that have better welfare states than America, and they prove this factually wrong. Uh, lowering barriers to starting up a business doesn't mean shit if you don't have money to start up a business. He literally is just talking about deregulation here, not giving people startup capital to make businesses. Uh, because again, he simps for large corporations. And you can guarantee, by the way, the people in inspired by Milton Friedman, the deregulation that takes place is not for small mom and pop companies. It's for big oil corporations, okay? Uh, it is, trust me, when this guy talks about deregulation, he is not talking about making it easier for some fucking low-income black family in Harlem to start a fucking coffee shop. He's talking about the ability for the United Fruit Company to invade Latin American countries and set up banana dictator, uh, fucking banana republics. So they can get better uh, prices off the uh, fruit they buy from the farms that they till with slaves. Um, so yeah, like we're, we're dealing with a com completely different ballpark here. But again, additionally, this is just factually incorrect. No, uh, if you want people to have a better shot at succeeding in life, they need to be provided certain basic provisions with regards to education uh, and economic opportunity. And it's really that simple. Leading mind, by the way. The greatest source of inequality has been special privileges granted by government. That government you may talk... Ah, uh, yes. The greatest source of inequality has been affirmative action and welfare. You can argue that one of the greatest um, forms of inequality um, has been the government imposing racial inequality on the population, which is totally true, if that's the case but he's arguing against ways of fixing the consequences of those impositions of racism, so. A great deal. There may be a lot of talk about how we're going to eliminate inequality, but if you look at, go back to your case of Britain, is there any doubt that one of the effects of governmental intervention in Britain has been to create new opportunities for special classes? That the way to get wealthy in a- I don't care about this. We're here for Sewell, not for Friedman. Um, first of all, he's dead, Lamau. Hey, yeah, if his, if his ideas were so good, how is he dead, huh? Um, second of all, this is actually the first full video of Sewell I've ever seen, and he kind of comes off like a smug fucking moron. I'll look at some of his later content at some point in the future, but yeah, he just kind of looks like an idiot. I, I mean, these arguments are incredibly fucking vacuous. The, there's absolutely no reason to believe they're any, like, this is just like YouTuber shit. Um... Sowell's arguments. This video is entitled, He Destroyed Egalitarianism, and in the contents of this video, the only thing that he did was conflate equality of opportunity with equality of outcome, and then say that black people actually don't want to be paid equally for fair work. That's, like, that's it. 
two minutes of this video was him speaking, and he was he embarrassed himself every time he opened his mouth, and that's all it takes for these dumb fucks to oh, you got him. This is a Sewell video about black people. I, I don't know. I, I need to take these one at a time because this guy is like lethally fucking stupid. Thomas Sewell, race and economics. Oh, is he like old, old man here? Nope. Still, we're back in 1984. He's still doing stuff today. Um, you know, he, he's still doing stuff today. Sewell, he's like this ancient moron. How sick would a debate with him be? A free people will never be equal, and a people made equal will never be free. It's really that simple. Damn, good thing nobody's talking about equality of outcome. This is what I mean. That's, that's the only thing they talk about. Anytime, a person's like, equality is good, I think. And then, then a conservative jumps in, and they're like, uh, you want to force all human beings to be identical to one another? That sounds pretty tyrannical. And they do that every single time. Here we go. Id poll. The older I get, the more I enjoy a black person berating a white liberal for deciding to speak and think for black people. Thomas Sowell is just incredible. This is literally fucking liberal id poll right here. How dare that woman say something factually correct about black people when uh, Thomas Sowell was around to say something factually incorrect about black people. L literally, they're just like, oh, black man said it, dark skinned man said it, it's okay. Doesn't matter if it's wrong. Imagine trying to win a debate when you're up against Friedman and Sowell. Good luck. Holy shit. This has to be like a Ben Shapiro crossover. These people must be insufferable. Holy shit. Three important questions I learned to ask as I listened to Sowell. Compared to what, at what cost, what hard evidence do you have? Like all the hard evidence Sowell uh, posted in this video. Very good. Oh my god, these people. Why don't we have shows like this on television anymore? Screw keeping up with the Kardashians. That's garbage. This. This is what we need. Education. I want you to all soy face as hard as you can right now so you can, in real life and in chat, so you can, so you can attempt to replicate the intellectual capacity of this man. Let me... Base my Friedman saw! That's... I, I, I actually can't felt like, uh, kiss, screw Avril Lavigne and Miley Cyrus and Nicki Minaj music videos. I'm watching Thomas Sowell Talk about how black people don't care about equal pay. Like... <laughs> fucking moron. Dude, if we- this guy's- this guy's now up there on the uh, people I want to debate tier. Oh, fuck. I wanna- we'll make it work, but we need to do more videos first. We have to- we have to establish a groundwork so we get familiar with all of his dumb fuck low IQ talking points, okay? I can't imagine, dude, if I could have been around back in the day of Friedman, I don't know what I would have done because that guy's IQ was fucking, that guy, when he was born, they taped his IQ to a fucking brick and kicked it into the fucking English channel, dude. Holy shit. If you actually read some of the shit that he's written on like economics, it's actually like, it's actually like fucking um, suicide inducing. It's phenomenal. Literally the definition of what swell is. What is this? Ah uh, yes, Malcolm X, the house Negro and the field Negro. Well, listen, I, listen, I'm not saying that. That would be racist of me. But here's a black man saying that, and I was merely reading out loud the video title. Uh, so I don't know how anyone could get mad at me for that. I mean, it's literally right here, and he probably says it in this video. In fact, I know he does, because I've seen this segment before, and it's a phenomenal segment. And Malcolm X was based, and I'll say it, Malcolm X was 20 times as economically literate as Milton Friedman and Sewell combined. And uh, fr frankly, we need to talk about that more, you know?